Record it. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks guys for getting on. We have a very special guest with us tonight that took some time out of his busy schedule. The creator of Shakeology, Darren Olin, or one of the creators of Shakeology. Darren, I, I know that you are the ingredient hunter. We've seen the, the videos of you traveling all over the world to find the best ingredients that this planet has to offer. We know that you're the Indiana Jones of ingredients. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, kind of how you got started with fitness and nutrition um, and maybe a little bit of the background of who you are and, and what, what got you into this whole thing? Absolutely. No, kind of can, for sure. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Okay. This, this thing kind of works then, huh? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, to give, give a context to how meaningful uh, nutrition is for me, um, it really, as, as weird as it sounds, it goes back to when I was born. Um, I was born three and a half pounds, two months early. Um, my signaling coming into this uh, world was uh, life is fragile. I'm fragile. Um, I have a whole list of things happening. Uh, I had a 50, 50 chance of surviving. Um, they thought that, you know, lungs were underdeveloped, brain was underdeveloped. Um, if you're three and a half pounds, there's not, the, the, all of those things are susceptible, right? So, um, I only really knew that because my father kind of watched me in, in, in my life and there was always nothing was easy as a kid. We all have those stories, so we all can relate. Um, but I just had weird physical problems. Um, I had a resting heart rate of 120 beats per minute. Um, there was thyroid issues. I had um, eye issues. It's funny that I'm wearing glasses because I haven't wore I haven't wore glasses. Uh, uh, I only need it to look at damn computers these days. But um, um, they said I would have glasses for the rest of my life, to which I never had any. Uh, only upon reading until the last, you know, few years, um, there was a whole bunch of things, and and really, not to make the story too long, it was it was you know I grew up in Minnesota, a small kid um, in a small town, um, and in all intents and purposes, my my parents weren't weren't the people that were giving me granola or uh, giving me any sort of uh, instruction as to eat it was really the habit of uh you know the heavy processed pizzas and uh, i think in medicating myself i was drinking at the age of 10 probably six old-fashioned cokes a day um yeah it was kind of i i think probably kind of uh you know kind of the 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 riddling approach through Coca-Cola is, is what, what I was doing, right. To, to, to help this, this kind of situation I was having. So at the age of 13, I saw an article, I think I actually saw it on news. There was a grapefruit cleanse and something in me, no, I don't know where that came from. Um, something beyond my small stature was like, you need to do that. And I asked my mom, I didn't tell her that I was planning to do a cleanse. I just said, Hey mom, can you go out and get me a bunch of grapefruits? And of course she did. And I just started eating them. And I, I think I did it for a couple of days and I felt amazing. It was the first, uh, experiential understanding that what I was doing, what I was consuming affected me. Right. Um, and, and of course, I then continued on eating horribly and being a teenager, and, uh, but I was always really active. Um, and then the next kind of situation that informed me was, you know, I was 5'9", 135 pounds, a scrawny kid uh, at 16, and I picked up my first weight. So I got mentored by some friends. Um, I got, my dad was a college professor. 
Uh, and some of his students kind of took me under his wing and kind of showed me how to resistance train and all that stuff. And, and of course, then I, I had that other experience. I had, wow, by moving my body consciously, I'm feeling better. So now this world of eating and from that experience of 13 and, and working out, it was informing me. It was, it was medicating me in a good way. Uh, and, and then really, you know, going from at 16, 135 pounds to two years going to 190, 200 pounds, um, playing college football. Um, it was then starting cut to starting fullback, uh, uh, in Minnesota at this D2 school. And then I had a career ending back injury. So that was the, that was a, a third, um, event that depressed me, um, uh, kind of stopped me in my tracks because if you go back to life is fragile, as I started, I was doing things to strengthen my body the whole time. I was overcoming obstacles the whole time. So again, now this big dream of a kid playing football, I got hit with can't, I can't play anymore. Um, so again, I'm hit with, man, I am fragile. I'm not strong enough. I can't keep playing. So through the depression, I quickly then said, you know what? I'm going to learn about the body. I'm going to learn about this nutrition. So that at 20 something, I then said, I'm going to do this professionally. And really it wasn't that I was going to go, uh, I never had the intention of traveling around the world at that point. I just said, I need to do this for myself. So uh, luckily at that crucial time, I could then go, oh, I don't want to major in anything else. I want to major in what, what is going to give me the most reward about myself. And, and of course, in that journey, seeing the amazing miracle that our body is, um, that was, that was all I needed because, you know, this, this thing that we have, this body that we get to carry around with us in life is, is an absolute miracle um, and uh, humbling to learn about it. So, so cut to, I graduated, I went to Boulder, Colorado, I started studying with a lot of people, I had a lot of doctors kind of come and give private lectures. So it started this, it kept pushing me forward. I started doing formulations. I started individually working with people. And um, in the investigation of food, I was quickly realizing that, man, the more I know about food and food processing and herbs and medicinal plants, the more I realize that most of it on the market sucks. And, and in that realization, quickly to follow was the delusion that was being illuminated of like, oh, food is safe. All food should be safe on the shelves and the packages. Of course, there's regulating bodies, this thing called the FDA. All of this stuff that you think has got your best interest because they're there. Why wouldn't they have your best interest? So the more I knew, the more I knew that that wasn't the case. And I needed to control what I could control for myself. So I started really formulating and diving into things. And, and at the about 2004, my father, 2005, my father passed away of alcoholism. And then I was like, okay, I've got a little bit of information. I had started traveling what am I going to do with this legacy? What am I going to do with sitting on this information and realizing and learning about this stuff, especially in countries of origin? I then said, you know, to myself and my, my father, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to at least touch and affect the things that I can. Um, and so for me to show up and to realize how a plant is used, how it's grown, how it's processed, how it, it can be utilized by a person um, was quickly the most important thing in my life. 
Um, and, and of course in the formulation is very, for me, it's very, uh, such a creative process and less about a scientific process. I think science is kind of the, the cousin to truly understanding plants. Um, when you really understand plants and the empirical data that plants have been used for millions of years and certainly in systems for tens of thousands of years, you realize that they have already done their homework. And so I was informed that way. And then of course we back into it with the science and make sure safety and quality and all of that stuff. So that's really how I got into it. And in that process, and, and in 2005, I decided to just do this myself. I had so many formulas and, and ingredients circling in my head, and I was starting to um, supply um, certain companies with some of these ingredients. Um, it was really in that 11th hour of having some formulas out very close to having some formulas on the market when I ran into and got really um, uh, the serendipity of meeting Isabel. Um, I had hired a really brilliant guy who still works for me, works for me to this day, um, who was managing a vitamin store here in Malibu. And he ran into Isabel and, and just that spark of who she was and who I was, he said, you guys just need to meet. And when I met Isabel for the first time, it was a kindred spirit in terms of how we looked at the world of, of health, really, and supplements and food and superfoods and medicinal plants. And, and so that was uh, an obvious uh, synergy. And then, you know, sitting down with Carl, I wasn't at this, at this point. I had not gotten any favorable information about how corporations and companies were, were dealing with these kind of things. Because again, I had investigated this stuff. And at this point, I kind of knew where people were getting their, their, their uh, ingredients. And so I, I had an inside track. So I wasn't going into the meeting with Carl with any sort of expectation uh, because I was already doing my own thing. I had plenty to do. I, w I knew what I wanted to do. Um, and, and it was really Carl's, which I think all of you can attest, his passion uh, and his integrity and his dream of wanting to affect the lives of millions of people in healthy and fulfilling way and that literally is what I heard and and uh, at that point I was like oh shit this guy is gonna do it and so I always said to myself if you're gonna have some sort of great product or multi-level uh, situation I was like wow if you could just create an amazing product and not deviate on the quality it's a no-brainer why, why would that not work? And so he's basically handing me the baton to do that. I, I was in. Like, if you're going to set me up in a construct of not having a, 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 a physical or, a, excuse me, a monetary limitation on constructing this thing, I'm in. Um, if we're not going to compromise on the quality and uh, to Carl's point, you just, you just formulate it and all back into the cost. And I was like, okay. And, and that was the birth of uh, the, the start of creating the healthiest meal of the day because we didn't have the name Shakeology then. Um, and to this day, to be honest with you, um, I'll just upfront say this. There's no there's no reason that I need to still be here. Meaning my contract was to create, to, to formulate Shakeology and be gone. That was the original thing. I'm going to create this good opportunity for me and uh, be gone. But the, the reality is we both needed each other because the only reason I'm still here is because of that integrity. That's the, the number one, because I have plenty to do. I have plenty going on in my life. I could be busy in this world as is, is much as I would want to be, but I'm here with Beachbody because it continues from the top down, living up to that integrity. And, and that's 
that's an amazing journey. And we're coming up now on, on the, uh, seven years of Shakeology. And um, so I'm here because of, because of what Carl believes in, what Isabel believes in, and now the team of Beachbody believes in. And uh, living up to that quality assurance is, is really not easy in this world because there's a lot of ways to kind of, you know, skimp on an ingredient and make an extra penny, which makes millions in the long term. And, um, and luckily, that's not happening. So it's a, it's a brilliant. So anyway, that's a long story, but, uh, oh, that's awesome. yeah. so then when he handed you the baton, what was like the next step? What, what was the, the process there? And then in that process, one of the questions was, what are your two favorite ingredients in Shakeology? Oh uh, yeah. Good couple <laughs> questions. Good couple questions. Uh, first one's easier to answer than the second one. Um, you know, the first thing, which is, uh, a very important thing I think when you're starting any kind of project in your life is you ask, ask yourself, what am I, what's the intent of this? Um, so I, I ask myself, what do people require right here, right now in this day and age to help them have a healthier life? That's really the genesis of it because it's not just to throw a bunch of uh, superfoods together and hope that it works. It's really what gift can it have in our radically different world? We're radically different than our ancestors, right? Why are we, why am I running all over the world to get some of the greatest superfoods uh, in the world that have been used for thousands and thousands of years? Because we need it. Why do we need it? We need it because we're in a different day and age right? We're dealing with stressors that we can't even see that are stressing us. My microphone, my computer, um, the toxins that are in, in our atmosphere, the toxins that are in our water, uh, the, the, the psychological strain of this sped up world. We're dealing, even in our home, from the carpets to the uh, deodorants to the paints to all of that stuff, we're getting, yeah, I call these things like the cell phone and everything. I call these fatal conveniences, right? So they're very convenient, but yet there, there's a, there's a, a fatalism on one side because if we're putting this up to our ear all the time, it's, it's absolutely 100% affecting your health. There is no debate on that. Um, so there's a lot of these things. So bottom line, we're stressed so hard and so not to mention nutritional stress. So any of these high reward, low density foods that we're eating on a regular basis, they may taste good. They may feel good from a hit perspective and a brain chemistry perspective, but they're nutritionally depleted and very, very stressful in the body because how is your body supposed to recognize something that wasn't even from the earth? wasn't even from the plants. There is no way that your body can really understand what is going on. So they may be, they may be hitting you in a, oh, I love my, and I'm not to bash, like people need to live. I understand that. So I'm not, I'm not here to bash junk food per se. I kind of am, but it's really the, the culture of food that we've created. We've gotten way off base in what food actually is. And yeah, so then you say to me, well, these are powders in a bag. Yes, they are, but they're also very carefully grown, very carefully processed. You know, they're slow dried. The temperature is low. We test them so that the biochemical compound markers are still in the ingredient. Uh, we send hordes of teams around the world to make sure every ingredient abides by the safety standards, the quality standards, and the potency standards that we have set. This is very, very important. This is also some of the things that I'm saying right now is incredibly important for the so-called high price objections that, you, that, that people ask me all the time. Um, 
because of what I said in the beginning, the very thing that got me into this world was the very poor, poor quality of everyone else, right? So I saw that people aren't doing this very well, so why don't we do it well? Um, unfortunately, we're in a false kind of sense of what the industry is because we, we think, well, you know, if I look at the, 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 the world, let's just pick on an ingredient. If I look at the world of, say, Camu Camu, right, um, I could look at that and find a price of, I don't know, I'm just making up a number, but if I, if I need a price of $20 a kilo, I could probably find it somewhere because someone could cut it with other things, they could do, dilute it down, they could take a poor quality, and they could, it would show up on the white piece of paper and say, hey, I just, this is Camu Camu and it's going to be in my product. That's all that most people, most companies accept. They actually don't know the potency of it. They don't know the active components of it. They don't know who processes it in the, in the country of origin. And certainly they don't have any relationship with the farmers that are actually growing it or processing it. So, so there's, there's a huge line of effort uh, that we go into on the backside that isn't necessarily, we're working on it, a sexy part of the story because everyone else should be acting in accordance with this kind of ethics. And, and when you see an inferior product, you see a poor quality uh, product out there that is, um, of course, you don't know that it's a poor quality, but it's a cheaper price. I can almost guarantee you that that most of those uh, products out there have very little, if at all, any quality assurance teams, uh, any research and development teams, and certainly don't have a relationship with the people actually growing it. So, so at Beachbody, we, we send people hundreds of thousands of miles every year around the world following the traces of where I've been uh, and following up with all of those relationships to make sure and spending millions of dollars to do it. All intents and purposes, we don't have to do it. We do it because we believe it's the right thing to do and it needs to, the, what is in that bag needs to be in that bag, period, end of story. And that's, that's really uh, a very important aspect that, we are actually looking at doing some videos to give um, you coaches a little more ammo in that, in that way. I can't say when they'll be ready and when that information, but, but because of these podcasts that I've been doing more of and speaking to this, the coaches uh, you know, have requested that. So we absolutely want to do that. So um, anyway, there was many different things in there, but, um, uh, but that's a really important aspect. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to look at my bag of Shakeology the same after listening yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So what about your, this is a tough one, your two oh, yeah. favorite ingredients? Well, you know, I, I, I can't pick one for sure. I can hardly pick two. I would say it took a while to get it into Shakeology. I would say Moringa Oliveira um, is one of my favorites. And because the contribution of it is so multidimensional, you realize that every ingredient is not a linear ingredient in Shakeology, um, that it's contributing often so many different aspects that from a marketing perspective, we're only telling you a few contributions. And Moringa is one of those things that, just from the vitamin, mineral, antioxidant, phytonutrient, chlorophyll, complete protein matrix that it has, um, and a high reward for the growers as well, um, and, and essentially easy to grow for the growers is just a, it's, it's such a multidimensional win uh, for us. Uh, and, and so I like it from not only ingesting it, um, but also for the social aspect of it, that, of what it's doing around the world. And I would also say that, um, I mean, the adaptogens are so incredibly powerful and important for us. And that, 
that being ashwagandha, astragalus, uh, schizandra, uh, maca, you know, uh, th- those kind of things are incredibly important for a multitude of regulation in the body, um, regulating endocrine systems, regulating the immune system, um, regulating stressors and cortisol responses. You know, those kind of things are so, so, so important. Um, so all of those adaptogens, the, also the reishi and the maitake and cordyceps and all of those. So anyway, that's my bundle that I love. But, but essentially, I could make the same argument for almost any ingredient because of its contributive factors. Um, those are just some off the top of my head. Awesome. Great. So the next question is, what, is the, what does the future look like for Shakeology? Oh man. Well, I just, I was at a meeting at beach by talking about, um, some supply, um, situations, farmers, all that stuff. And, you know, I just look around at the, the amazing group of hundreds of people keeping Shakeology in existence. You know, the funny thing is that Shakeology is not stagnant. Um, it's a, it's a kind of moving formula. And what do I mean by that? We're always looking for new superfoods uh, that can contribute to Shakeology. Um, so, so we may, you know, Moringa was an example of that. Like finally we found some ways that, that, and some supply chains and things like that that we could get Moringa in. So, so then we were able to add it in and, and, and it was able to give what it was able to give. And, and so the thing is that, you know, sometimes we even run into supply issues with ingredients that they may have started from an artisan farmer and, and they just can't grow uh, enough for us. And then we have to think, wow, this isn't going to expand fast enough for us. And if we've looked at all the, the options, then we have to like uh, look for another ingredient that can contribute the same or different or more uh, to the formula. And, and this is what makes you know, the research and development team nuts. This is a very, very difficult formula to keep in existence um, because of so many different aspects. And I just tell all these guys, hey man, that's, that's your job security. Uh, so the, the more complicated that is, don't, don't get upset too much and, and just know that we're always improving the existing formula always. And, and again, that's, that's a reason why I'm still here. Um, because we're always improving and pushing forward. I have a list of, oh, probably 25, uh, new superfoods that, that could potentially be in Shakeology, but there's a whole line of work that you need to do. You have to, you know, you have to vet the suppliers. You have to see if they have scalability. You have to see if they need money. You have to see a whole variety of things. If their processing facility passes our stringent audits, um, most don't, by the way. Um, We send teams in and most of these these, uh, guys in these countries don't even pass the audit. So, and by the way, we're always formulating, you know, we have new flavors on the docket. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say anything about the the kinds or the flavors (laughs) of what flavor is, but we are doing that as we speak. And they're, I would say they're, that's the next question. (laughs) Yeah. There's a, there's a couple really good, good ones. And I think really good flavors, uh, that are coming. So, um, and, and the testing is looking great on those. Um, and, and we're also doing other kind of non Shakeology formulations. So there's different, different, let's call it different applications of receiving good food. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, can we get any, can we get like a head nod on uh, vegan vanilla? You don't have to say anything. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Oh God, I don't even know if I can say it. But let, let's just say that is absolutely in process. I have no idea when it will come out, but we have definitely been working on it. So um, I know that's been a big, big request and we have heard it and we're working on it. And um, like I said, I have no idea when it will come out. But um, we're, we're working on it for sure. Great. 
Yeah. So um, I might, hopefully, hopefully I don't lose my job because I just said that, but <laughs> whatever. No, you probably can't answer these ones either, but um, are, are there any other things besides Shakeology that you're working on for Beachbody now? Um, maybe Shakeology bars? <laughs> We're working on a, a handful of stuff. Sure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So um, I don't want to get you into trouble here. Um, yeah. So a couple other questions here. Do you have time? Is it okay if we go a little bit longer? It's, it's, it's been about yeah. 30 minutes. Okay. So, yeah, we're good. Um, what, uh, what are your thoughts on when people ask if Shakeology is like certified organic or non-GMO or gluten-free? Yeah. Good question. Um, so let me start with the organic thing. There, there's several ingredients in Shakeology that is organic. Um, the ingredients that are not are just happen to be not certified. Now, let me under, let me back up into that because oftentimes if you're in South America, if you're in Madagascar, if you're in all these places that they're already organically growing the ingredients, right? So, so all of the practices are a, uh, approved by us. Um, all of the things that, um, the organic would test for we're testing for and more. Um, but here's where it comes into play. Often when you're looking at a certification and this goes through for all of those, right? Um, non-GMO, gluten, and organic certification. Don't get me wrong. All of those things that they have in the system are important um, and have a place. But when you're with a farmer and you already have systems in play, place that have the quality up to your standard, then what happens is that when you, if you were to uh, ask the farmer to get organically certified or non GMO or whatever it is, that burden actually goes directly on the farmer and doesn't do anything to improve the quality that we've already uh, tested for and passed. So the, uh, the quality has already been growing in the high standard. It just hasn't been certified. So often in third world situations, that burden gets right on the farmer. And ultimately that would be a cost directly to you because the farmer would have to immediately raise their price, raise it to us. And ultimately we're in such a thin margin with Shakeology um, because of its distribution model, obviously with the distribution model going out to you guys that, that that burden would ultimately be in a higher price point because our quality, the most important thing is that we have tested, we have our own teams and we have tested for all the things that we don't want in it. GMOs, pesticides, herbicides, all of that stuff. So that's already there. We are, we're already, we're already covered. We're just not putting the burden of certification on some of these situations because at the end of the day, if it's not improving the product, then at this point, it's not worth it for us to uh, just put a label on a, on a, on a bag. And the, the, the cool thing about uh, being coaches is you can relay this information to the customer. Um, GMO, we test for all GMOs. We don't accept any GMOs in our product. Um, again, the certification body is, I think, uh, I don't know where we're at, but we've looked into it. Again, it's a very intense um, uh, certification situation. So again, that's just more cost. But again, the, the, the thing you have to realize is we test for all this stuff um, and then stand by our, our own internal not acceptance of GMOs. Again, those scenarios for other companies that don't have the hordes of quality assurance teams and research and development teams like we do, they won't know. So they need these certifications to, to, to regulate their products when we already have that regulation. So um, 
gluten-free is a little different, uh, obviously from the same perspective of certification, but um, there, there's a tricky thing with cross-contamination of potential things with, say, oat. Uh, oat protein um, technically doesn't have gluten in it, but it can raise the same gluten sensors. Um, and as of right now, um, because of oat is so important in our formula and there hasn't been another good replacement to contribute in the way that oat is, it's hard for us to uh, be completely gluten free and or certified. However, there's also several uh, people with celiac disease. I'm not saying that Shakeology is uh, approved for people with celiac, but we have received um, individuals who have celiac disease and gluten sensitivities and have been able to drink Shakeology, but I can't speak to each individual person. Gotcha. <clears throat> is there a reason that, uh, it's probably climate, I, I would assume, but that's some of that reason that we go to the third world countries to get some of the ingredients versus being able to have it grown in, in the U S well, there's two ways to answer that. I think, I think it's advantageous to grow some things in the United States. And I talked to an organization that's looking into, uh, growing, um, I think it's, uh, chia and quinoa and stuff like that. And I, I've just been keeping my tabs on that. The, the important thing is that why these things are around the world is because the planet has certain ecological uh, systems and those systems have, and those, uh, those natural stressors have created environments for these plants to exist. The reason why maca has these endocrine enhancers uh, and adaptogenic response systems is because it's responding to the high high elevations and stressors of at, at, of being at uh, 10,000 uh, plus feet. Um, and that develops the compounds and the structure within the plant, which when we ingest, we receive those benefits because they know how to biologically activate in the body. So to mock, a, mock from a maca standpoint, many others, they simply wouldn't grow uh, many places. Um, uh, in the maca situation, we actually have been looking at different regions throughout Peru as potential to uh, help with our supply chain. That's about the extent of it. You know what I'm saying? So we look at regions within the region. Um, but very similarly, for example, my first run in with cordyceps was, was in uh, the Himalayas in Bhutan, where it was you know, close to 20,000 feet and they're harvesting cordyceps there. And it just simply, th there is some scenarios where you can do some lab things that reproduce high quality stuff. And we're looking into all of those things, but, but in certain aspects, you can't really reproduce that, which mother nature has uh, selected to be optimal. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then <laughs> that's, I mean, the, the example of the mockery is, that's pretty cool right there. I mean, yeah. So you, if you, if you look at every single ingredient like that, it's a whole world. Every ingredient is a whole world of its own unique, uh, not only, uh, chemical structure, but growing structure, um, processing structure and needs. And, and all of those have different compounds. Sometimes these things have 300 compounds, um, uh, so, so it's every ingredient you're, you're conveniently taking in this, this, you know, the Shakeology and receiving thousands of compounds. Um, and, and that's the thing. It's really easy to go, Oh, this tastes good, blah, blah, blah. And, but this is a very, very, very complex, um, <laughs> biochemical plant, uh, world happening that you're, that you're, that we're making it easy for you to. <laughs> get the effect of so <laughs> absolutely yeah. and we get to pass it along to others at the same time absolutely okay so the next question is there like is there really a, a protein scale of one to seven is that is that something that i think you know i think the old um uh our old uh, head of 
uh, research Bill Wheeler. He said that. I, I've never seen that, and he, he very well could. Uh, I just know that from, from our perspective, you know, there's many reasons why we've chosen the uh, whey protein isolate, for example, in the original. And, you know, this is without a doubt the, the highest commercial available uh, uh, whey protein isolate with a very um, delicate ion filtered um, uh, processing um, manufacturing uh, 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 extraction process. And, and then, of course, we test for antibiotics and, and hormones and all that stuff. So all I can say is I don't know what the scales are. I don't have experience in that. But I do know that our uh, whey protein isolate is, is the highest on the market. And because of the isolate, you have less um, uh, lactose or, or essentially fat in that which which uh, allows for because fat's an interesting molecule um it it will take any toxin and and kind of surround it it's a it's a protect protection uh mechanism of uh i don't know if it goes beyond mammals but certainly humans and 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 um uh, other other creatures that's something that fat does so we have less of that lactose in there for potential toxicity and stuff so so anyway, yeah, the 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 uh, the protein is a is a important one and and one again that we make sure that we have our whole list of testing that goes into it and and what we will allow and what we will not allow uh, in terms of toxic uh, influence. Great. Uh, and then this is one that comes up a lot uh, for for mothers or um, yeah. soon to be mothers um, with nursing or breastfeeding. Um, had, do you get that question a lot? I'm assuming. I, I do, you know, and it's funny that I, I, I can answer it and I can't answer it at the same time because it's, it's kind of like saying, um, you know, is, is uh, I'm trying to think of an example, but you know, every, let me just start by saying every person is biochemically individual and you, you have no idea what they ate, what their history is, um, what their current needs are um, with being pregnant um, or any other situation. So, so I would first say you have to consult a healthcare practitioner or doctor. I would first say, um, uh, between you and me and whoever else listens to this, I would find someone beyond um, uh, just, I mean, consult your doctor. I have to say that because of uh, legal reasons, but I would also find um, other health professionals that can test for um, sometimes food, you can be allergic, just like women who are breastfeeding or women that are pregnant have certain cravings. They're craving nutrients within certain foods. So, so equally you should test for foods um, just like you should test for your avocado if you're allergic or not. So this would be in the same. Now, that being said, several uh, hundreds and hundreds, I'm sure by this point, uh, women, uh, certainly uh, Isabel did when she was pregnant, um, drank Shakeology the whole way through. My point of view, if I were pregnant, uh, would be, uh, it would be doubly important for not only me, but also my child of getting nutrient dense foods in them, at least, um, at least that. Um, so, so I would, you know, strongly support that that being said, that if you have no interaction problems or any other things that I won't know about individually to you. So great. Uh, so this is a, a big question. So for us that drink it every day, you know, when we miss a day, we know it. And so, you know, three or four bucks is a joke to us. But obviously, we have people that we're talking to that the price is the biggest hurdle for them. Mm. Um, especially when they might be comparing it to other things out there. Um, what kind of things would you say to someone who's having, who's struggling with, with the price of, 
of a four dollar meal. Well, I would, I, I, you know, it, it's kind of like the worst question to ask me, and and why I say that is because I've I've never, even when I didn't have money and I was a poor college kid, I never skimped on food for for some reason. I would never, you know, I would not pay my motorcycle payment over getting getting quality food. So I, I, I'm the worst person to, uh, you know, have that. The other, the other thing, kind of the, the first grand statement I will say is, uh, you know, you either pay your farmer or pay the doctor. I mean, that's, you, you're going to, here's, here's the thing. And I mentioned this in my book and I, I dive deep into my book on, on many of the, you know, uh, nutrition quality, qualities and and aspects of food I, I find it absolutely astonishing shocking at times that people won't question anything about the fast food and things that are in boxes and cans and whatever else because culturally they've already accepted it they haven't even questioned it ever and they'll eat their row of oreos which is absolutely toxic Right, and and slowly destroying and and degenerating the body. So so the person usually giving that argument has a whole slew of foods that are causing so much harm that it's laughable. Um, because aside from the marketing fun of Indiana Jones and superfoods and all that stuff, the reality is. I have spent 15, 20 years researching stuff. The reality is that we do have a quality assurance team that flies around the world. We do have uh, research and development that makes sure that everything that in, is in that bag is in that bag. And I'm telling you right now that you can't find another competitive product that does more than us. There's no way because we have so much to back up that what you are getting is a nutrient-dense, power-packed uh, gift that's in that bag. That's it. And, and, and it really is nature in a bag. We did everything we could to deliver food and superfoods so that you can actually have a better life. That's what it's about. And I, I would just come to people, if they literally are not open to hearing uh, in our, in our, in our, you know, fighting for their uh, candy latte that they're taking every day, or their their um, you know KFC that they're having once a week, or whatever the hell they're doing and spending money on. They're the problem is that they're creating a hell of a debt that's hitting their body, and you're going to pay for it. And I've really stressed this in your in my book that we really have to wake up. The culture of our food is insane. Why is Shakeology created? Because we're insane. We have been eating food that has just been horrible. And not to mention all of the list of things that I have talked about before and the stressors that we're just kind of in as this incubator of the life that we're kind of in with technology and pollution and stuff. For God's sakes, man, look around. That, you know, I would tell people, don't take my word for it. I'm telling you what this stuff is. Go look up ashwagandha. Go look up cordyceps. Go look up maitake. Don't listen to me. Take it off of you to try to be the, the, the prophet for them and say, listen, I've been doing this. I feel great. Here's these things. Here's these experts. Here's this company that backs up everything that's in this bag is in that bag. And if you don't believe me that this stuff is powerful, go look it up. Go learn for yourself about what your body needs and what, what the gifts are that are in this bag. And if you, if you go into it with the idea that it's expensive, you're already putting that on them. And now, of course, they're going to shoot that back to you. But you have to come to that. Like, listen, I am committed, like, just for me personally. Everything that's in that bag is from around the world. Some of the greatest superfoods on the planet. Argue with me? Fine. I'm leaving. I don't have time for that because there's someone right over here that needs it, that absolutely can overcome um, some problems that they have. And that's the reality. That's, 
that's the space you need to come from because if you have money issues, you're projecting that everywhere, right? We are all abundant, period. End of story right here, right now. We are. And it's only our lack of receiving that stops us from that. So I don't want to go too far into the, into the mental, emotional aspect of it, but that's the reality. The reality is that, that we're often stopping us and the people that are balking at 130 bucks, then educate them because they have no idea what, what, what's actually happening in that bag. So, you know, anyway, there's a few, few little nuggets there, but <laughs> I can listen to this all night. Amen. <laughs> so do you want to, we got um, maybe like eight more minutes. If you want to tell sure. us a little bit about uh, your new book, super life, the five forces that will make you healthy, fit, and eternally awesome. That's the yeah. best book title I think I've ever heard. That's pretty cool. You know, it's funny that, um, when I get approached to write this book, you know, the first, uh, you know, uh, when the publisher asked me, what do you want to write about? And she goes, you want to write about superfoods? And you know, obviously that's a, that's a no brainer. I'm known for that. But the truth is I've been studying natural health for a long time. And I was like, I don't want to write about that right now. The, the reality is that even that you want to create a foundation for your body that gives it the greatest benefit for even when you're taking in nutrient foods. If your digestion is off, if your body's stressed out, if you're not having enough water, if you're not eating the right foods, your whole system, your whole environment inside yourself is very inefficient at receiving even, even healthy food. So I wanted to write a book on the five, and there's actually a secret force in there, so there's actually six. Um, uh, and it's, a, it's some of what I was just kind of going off on on, 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 on uh, the mental part of it. But there's these five forces, right, that help your body thrive. And when you understand these forces um, from alkalinization, hydration, detoxification, um, on and on, when you understand that these things govern your body and thriving, um, then it kind of gets you away from this fadism um, that people are always trying to sell you something. What I wanted to do is give a guide, a very practical guide that can set yourself up so that your body can thrive, period. You know, the title came because I, I, I again, I asked myself, what, what do I want to convey in this book? What do I care about? I ultimately care about having a super life. I care about having a super life on every level, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And if my body is not in tune, I'm done. There's no part of me uh, praying that's going to that's gonna help me uh, have a healthier back or um, a flatter st stomach. There's a reality that we're in that's physical, that's very real, that's here and now. And that is my whole life after my father died was one that I was going to live that, that powerful life in every step. And every step was to contribute to someone else's life. And so this, this book is a very practical guide in things that I have learned from masters before me of these principles that when you understand the power of water and what kind of water, when you understand that eating fresh, whole uh, foods support you from the oxygen, support you from the alkalinity, that actually, here's, here's an important piece that I'll leave you with or maybe not leave you, but one thing I, I take in the book, I spin a lot of things on their head. I talked about a lot of the things that we've accepted in our culture with health, with food, uh, with nutrition, um, that, that isn't in our best interest. Um, I, I talked on uh, Shaleen's podcast too about the protein myth. I go into the damaging effects of too much protein and how the, the, the badge of some sort of health um, uh, 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 supplement or food is like, oh, how much protein is it? How much protein does it have in it? And everyone's asking that question when in reality, the body is super efficient at protein and too much of it can absolutely and does 
uh, cause some major problems in the body. So I, I dive into that. I also dive into, here's a huge point um, that I dive into, and I, it's really about the environment you're creating in your body. Everything that you take in is, just because you may like it, it's creating an environment, right? So if I, if I go out to a field and I give it water and I uh, put compost on it and I give it minerals and I take care of my field, what happens? That field grows amazing foods and I'm able to go harvest it and eat it. What happens if I go out and I, I uh, uh, you know, don't, don't really water it, I don't put any, or I let's say I spray chemicals all over it and all of that stuff where I'm actually destroying the actual compounds in the soil and everything else. And then the, the, the soil actually changes. The reality is that everything that you're taking in your body, you're creating an environment inside. And this is what happened when the American Medical Association was founded. Um, it was founded right after the, the uh, the coming into and the finding really not discovery, but the finding of penicillin by Louis Pasteur. And when he stumbled upon penicillin, he was like, Hey, cool. That's the end of all disease because we can annihilate all viruses. And this other guy named Antoine Bekemp, he was a French chemist. He came in and said, no, 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 no. That's not what, that's not how it works. All of our medical models before that time and what and what Anton, and what Anton Bekemp what, are we still going still going sorry, here, sorry here. there we go we echo. So, so all of that that was happening before that Anton Bekemp was saying listen it's not we're not catching colds we're not catching diseases we're creating environments that support the disease we're creating environments that invite viruses, bacteria, all of those things. So he was saying that if you eat fresh and whole and all of these things, you're actually creating an environment that supports a strong immune system because the intelligence of bacteria, virus, or anything else coming into the body also wants to survive. So when bacteria, virus, cancer, whatever comes into your body, and it deems the environment that you've created is worthy for it to survive and thrive, it will. But if you've created a healthy environment with exercise, sleep, low stress, a uh, bunch of plant foods, all of these things, then you're actually creating a better scenario, a better environment, so your body actually invites those things out. And it's a massive difference between our fearful um, catching colds, um, uh, over vaccinating, over shot world when in fact food is medicine uh, and it creates the environment so you don't host these things. I'm not saying it's the catch all be all because there's always an anomaly where a five year old kid comes into this world and has cancer. I'm not saying that because there's many factors that are, but from our degenerative world that we're in that's killing most people on this planet most of it is the environment that you're creating by the things that you're putting in your mouth and the actions that you're taking or not taking so so i get into a lot of those different things that ultimately do what puts the power back on you puts the power back on you to create the life that you truly want because denial does not work with the body. Just because you can go into denial in your mind doesn't mean your body is, gets this get out of jail free. If you're shoveling Doritos in every day and it feels good here, guess where it doesn't feel and you'll have to pay that debt. So, um, you know, anyway, it's, a, it's, it's, there's many things and there's a lot of, uh, really good to do lists. And a lot of people have, have really responded well, and it's getting a nice groundswell of support. So, so, so yeah, you can order on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all of the places and even freaking Costco. How funny is that? <laughs> uh, the last question is, is there going to be an audio version of, of this bad? You no, know, it's, it's funny. I keep getting that. And I reached out to my, uh, publisher and she gave it an okay. 
So I don't know when I'm going to, I'm hoping I don't have to go to New York to do that, but I'm definitely going to do that and, and do the voice myself and read it myself. And, and, um, hopefully that's, uh, within the next couple months. Awesome. Beautiful. Well, Darren, I can't thank you enough. This was beyond any expectations that I had going into this. Cool. Um, and we're, our team is called team boom and, we have a funny way of saying thank you at the end of our calls. So we're going to do that and then, and then we'll let you go. Well, um, one second. Yeah. I'm going to say everyone check out my new website, superlife.com. Tons of information. Sign up for the newsletter, all of that stuff. I got to say that because my team's working really hard to, to get more information out. So, um, but now I'm ready for the boom. <laughs> you, you already know. Good guess. All right. On three. One, two, Three. Boom. Received. Boom back to you. Thank you, Darren, so much. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. It was a great call. You're welcome. Cheers. Hope to see you at Summit. How do I live? Absolutely.